nestled atop the cliffs that rise from the Sword Coast, the Citadel of Candlekeep houses the finest and most comprehensive collection of writings on the face of Farron. It is an imposing fortress, kept in strict isolation from the intrigues that occasionally plague the rest of the Forgotten Realms. It is secluded, highly regimented, and it is home. Within these hallowed halls of knowledge, your story begins. You have spent most of your twenty years of life within this keep's austere walls, under the tutelage of the sage Gorion. Acting as your father, he has raised you on a thousand tales of heroes and monsters, lovers and infidels, battles and tragedies. However, one story was always left untold, that of your true heritage. You have been told that you are an orphan, but your past is largely unknown. Lately, Gorion has been growing distant from you, as if some grave matter weighs heavily on his heart. You have asked about his concerns as gently as possible, but your queries have been in vain. Your sole comfort is the knowledge that he is a wise man, and you know he will tell you when the time is right. Nonetheless, his silence is troubling, and you cannot help but feel that something is terribly wrong. Today, Gorion has appeared more agitated than ever, and now he has uncharacteristically interrupted your chores in the middle of the day, imparting hurried instructions for you to equip yourself for travel. He has handed you what gold he can spare, but given no clue as to why. Nevertheless, you now stand before the Candlekeep Inn, ready to purchase what you need for an unplanned and unexpected journey. Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Baldur's Gate. Uh, the in Baldur's Gate being the uh, entire trilogy of uh, Baldur's Gate 1, uh, Shadows of Am, and the Throne of Baal. Uh, we actually are in the game now, how exciting, uh, we can move and do stuff. Um, and, uh, as the narrator told us in the beginning, we are, uh, sent here to outfit ourselves by Gorion for the adventures to come, and, uh, frankly, it's just what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna start by talking to Winthrop, he, uh, has an insanely amount, large amount of weapons for being an innkeeper. Uh, but he's a good guy, I mean, he's kind of, uh, oops, I think I just ticked him off. He, um, he's, he's kind of like that typical, uh, large laughing innkeeper, but anyway, we're gonna buy a sling and, uh, a bunch of bullets, uh, I think we're gonna do 14, and, uh, cause you never want to go stingy on your ranged weapons, you always seem to run out, and we're actually gonna buy, I think I skipped it, we're gonna buy, uh, a quarrel of bolts, so 20 bolts, to make a quest later in the game, uh, just a little bit easier. And actually, it's just coming up right now. Um, of course, equip everything, and... Why do... Why do I have two qu two quarter staves? It's kinda weird. Anyway, uh, we're gonna come over here and, uh, just loot everything, uh, pretty much. In Candle Keep. This is locked, but we're gonna force it open. And... You have failed. That's... <laughs> well, I know you can force that open. Typically, uh, it just has a an, an armor's uh, an armor scroll and a scroll for introvision, which by no means is is necessary, but y you know, just useful useful things. Um, Candle Keep. It's pretty much an enclosed environment to learn just about uh, the all the mechanics of the game, um, with very little consequences for getting caught stealing anything. And oh, we gotta watch out for that guy. Um, because apparently, even if they're sleeping, they see you steal it. This chest here uh, holds a gem in it worth a thousand gold, but you actually can't you can't get it unless you play as a hobbit and put all of your pick lock ability or all of your ability points into pick lock and boost that up to sixty five. Because uh, otherwise, you won't be able to open it. You can talk to the noblemen up here. Uh, you can kind of threaten them to take their valuables, but they 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 really don't care. Um, or well, they don't. It's not that they don't care, but they don't do much. They basically laugh at you and uh, tell you that they're going to call the guards on you. So that's kind of useless. Um, not much to do up here. Uh, we'll just leave since we can't bust anything open for some reason. Oh, and Firebeat Elven here, uh, this guy's actually worth 2,000 EXP, but we're not gonna kill him, uh, <laughs> mainly because we don't want to mess up the game. Um, 
you'll be meeting him in and out uh, during the game, but uh, kind of a, he makes a cameo, I guess, here. Um, and he knows Elminster. Elminster, you'll see him later. And uh, he, Elminster's a pretty cool guy, too. Uh, I think it, I, I've read, I read uh, his first three... Ed Greenwood, uh, he wrote the Elminster series. And actually is kind of responsible for the world of Baldur's Gate, I guess you could say. Uh, he, he created the Forgotten Realms. He's an author. Um, but... Uh, Oh, uh, what would, how would I how would I put it? Um, his first book was awesome, and then steadily they just his books go downhill. I think so. But anyway, anyway, we're gonna talk to Fuller here, who asks you. Well, if you ask him for some errands, he'll be like, "Hey, get some bolts." And wait a minute, why don't we have any? I know I bought some. Well, anyway, he puts you on this quest that you can buy bolts for, which I thought I had, and apparently not. But anyway, we're gonna grab that antidote and uh, Hull's sword. Hull is a uh, is a watcher here in the town uh, who frequently gets hung over and uh, and uh, forgets his sword in his chest. But uh, we're gonna go up north now and get that uh, those bolts that we left behind. So now that we have some downtime, um. I guess now would uh, be a good time to explain. Uh, this particular version of Baldur's Gate, even though it was hacked to be a one continuous play, does not have any mods on it. Uh, I, I saw a couple walkthroughs, uh, or, well, let's plays, of people playing the game with uh, mods. And, I mean, I mean, uh, that's cool. That's I mean, you know, e e the mods... <laughs> In, they they enhance the gameplay slightly. I I well to be honest, I don't think they enhance it at all. But I mean, like if you're gonna play the game, play the game the way it was meant to be played. It, it takes the fun out of it out of it if you mod it to walk around with like a level god character or you know uh, an 85 uh, or 25 stats all around and and I don't know. It's just it's just not worth it if you're just teleporting and teleporting around and, and I'll be honest I I did uh put the debug opt on uh Baldur's Gate before and just kind of messed around you know uh just grabbing people on my team for uh even NPCs that you shouldn't be able to have and you know uh creating uh items tra transporting the transporting was really nice and oh it was so hard to go back uh to not transporting just because it, I, I mean, it, walking is such a huge part of the game, but at the same time, it's a major part of the game, and I think, I think you should, uh, you should play the, play it like that. Um, Fuller, you, I just gave him the bolts. Calls me a money grubber. I know if your charisma is higher, he'll give you more than just the ten gold. But uh, regardless, you get the fifty XP, and um, you know, doing some more looting. Actually, there is a guy in here who kills me pretty much every time um, as a wizard <laughs> because we suck as a wizard he uh, he's an assassin we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with him right now <laughs> in fact we're probably not gonna mess with him at all uh, to be honest <laughs> if you're a fighter a ranger just about any other class but the wizard you can take him uh, the gate warden here he uh, he'll he'll ask you if uh, if you want to do some training, and to be honest, it's it boring as as hell. Uh, we, we are not going to do the the training exercise. However, I, I'm all up for looting some uh, looting some uh, hospitals. Uh, how about you? <laughs> the priest of Agma is uh, pretty naive. We're gonna just say yes. I'm sick, and uh, I need your help. And even though we're obviously not, he gives a healing potion. So, you know that's nice. Uh, good way to start off the beginning of the game. Um, this has a... Oh, I know it has a... Uh, what is wrong with this quarterstaff? This is the faulty quarterstaff. I don't know what the deal is. I can't bust anything open. But I know this chest has a... Um, another potion in it, along with some gold, that you should be able to grab, but Chesney is being a wuss today. I'm not quite sure why. Anyway, we're going to leave. Uh, trying to do this as quick as possible. To be honest, the beginning of the game is somewhat dull. Um, just running around grabbing cheap experience points. Uh, here's Hull. We have his sword. Uh, he yells at you and says that uh, accuses you of stealing it, even though he asked you to go get it. Uh, mainly because he's trying to ma not make himself look bad. Um, and uh, if once again, if your charisma is higher, he'll treat you with a little bit more... Uh, well, he'll thank you and give you a lot more gold for it. Oh, good old Reaver. 
Um, he wants us to come in here and uh, kill some rats. Which is fine by me, to be, because, to be honest, I don't think they actually hurt you. Traitors, cats, you should be killing these things. Oh, come on, kill it already. Yeah, as you can see I, down below, I turned the dice rolls on, so you can actually see when uh, when the attacks are being made. So I haven't actually missed, but I'm just going to kill these rats. Die! Die, rats! Epically kill rats, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, oh wait, silvering. We have won our first battle! Congratulations, Chesney. You are the Rat Slayer.